Aston Villa earn a massive three points at home at Bournemouth this weekend in a game that bookmarks the end of this little chapter of the season, this little Ironman effort they've been on of four games in ten days, away to Arsenal, two legs with Leo, and then this weekend at home at Bournemouth, where basically the entire season was on the line. Elimination from Europe and then dropping points in these last two games would have probably, you know, took all the wind out of their sails from this season. And very quickly, heroes turn into villains, no pun intended, but... They have passed with absolute flying colours and this game we watched at the weekend by Bournemouth was a real heroic Herculean effort I think from a lot of the players involved. I did a score prediction for this game this weekend and I did expect that Bournemouth were going to come into this game with high high energy but one thing I didn't really expect them to do as aggressively as they did for probably about 80, 90, yeah basically the entire match was they were super comfortable being very man for man all across the pitch and really asking big, big questions of Aston Villa's, you know, how much, en you know, how much they actually had left in the tank, how much energy could they muster up for this game? Because the starting 11 has undoubtedly got quality absolutely everywhere. But when you look at the bench, there wasn't any supplementary players to come in and help this team out if Bournemouth were to get a uh, control of the game, a stranglehold of the match, whether it would be with possession, chance creation, all that kind of thing. And so many of these players have been pushed to their limits over the last 10 days, it must be said. And really, the first half was a really cagey, back and forth affair for the first 30 minutes or so. Cliver actually did a lot of good work in this game. I was a bit of a, a, a naysayer on him when he came into the Premier League. I didn't think he'd be able to cut it at this level but in this match certainly it looked the party did very good at trying to progress the ball from deeper into attack along with the likes of Ryan Christie and you know at 0-0 the game was going either way no team was really overly exerting dominance Villa did look dangerous with the likes of Bailey and Diaby looking really really sharp early on in this match but when Matty Cash gives away that penalty and you see Solanke converting it from the spot to make it 1-0 you're thinking oh this afternoon is going to be extra hard for Aston Villa in terms of you know actually getting the three points over the line in this one because Bournemouth leading in the match surely that plays into their hands a little bit more they can stay a little bit tighter man for man but maybe you know be a wee bit more conservative with what areas of the pitch they aggressively press into which could give them the sort of springboards with some of their pacey players to be able to counter-attack Villa as the game went on. But we didn't actually see that. Unai Emery chess ball really came into big, big effect in this match because as much as we've seen McGuinness and Tielemans being the base, the rock midfield, Tielemans was doing a great job of really sliding across the pitch and travelling with the ball, breaking through the lines. And then with the synergy that we've got with Watkins, Bailey and Diaby in this match in particular, these three guys were really, really, really singing off the same hymn sheet in this match. And... Honestly, towards the end of this game, I was singing the praises of like Isak and Gordon and how much they have gelled together and how like, them as a pair are like one of the best pairs across European football. And this might be the first sign that if this can, this kind of system and this kind of synergy with Watkins, Diaby and Bailey can continue to click, Aston Villa have definitely got a, a front trio on their hands that will cause a lot of teams a lot of problems. For a long time to come because as much as Telemans could slide through and break the lines uh, Morgan Rogers almost called him Aaron Rogers there. <laughs> I don't know why. but Morgan Rogers was doing a very good job of doing that kind of role as well and this is the second or third time I've seen him since he's come into Aston Villa and he's very keen because he's quite strong he doesn't really lose the ball it takes a lot to get him off the ball he's quick without being lightning but he loves to come into this zone here and challenge centre-backs in difficult situations, especially when he does have a striker with him like Watkins or if Diaby is peeling off into different spaces as well. And although it is Rodgers that sneaks into this pocket behind Smith and gets one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper to get the goal to make it one each, it's a great pass from Leon Bailey to find him. It does look like it's a Morgan Rodgers goal, don't get me wrong, but this is... Uh, an opportunity that's created by the machine where the chess pieces go across the board and what questions they're asking of Zabarnier, of Sinise, Kerkez, who, you know, he actually took up some really fun positions in this game and looked a bit of a threat. And subsequently, we did see Bailey come off the leash a little bit. And Diaby, honestly, in this central role here, I really loved the freedom that I've seen in this game that he's got to pick where the ball is, pick where the opportunity is and really double up, whether it with be Bailey or running off of Watkins to give him something to play with, as well as sometimes maybe even hanging wide and giving Rodgers a bit of space to run into because, you know, if there's somebody else standing here, sometimes, you know, that kind of move can be difficult, you know, so you need to give options for the ball to go and then, you know, you're asking defenders to make a decision and he's been very good at, at kind of crossing that line, as it were. And honestly, after Bournemouth went 1 0 up, I thought Aston Villa found another gear, really kicked into play. Dina liked to, you know, do his thing, uh, being the rook piece, as it were, having cash flying up and down the wings here. With these, like, diagonal bishop moves, like Telemans and Rogers, just kind of incising and cutting through lines. 
uh, in the pitch. And as I say, there's no kind of weird way to say this without laughing, but the likes of Diaby, uh, Watkins, McGinn, some of these guys are maybe more like the queens you know, or the masterpieces that can make all the moves and go everywhere and affect the game wherever they need to. Don't tell them I called them that. <laughs> And when we get the build-up play for it to go 2-1 between Bailey, Diaby and Watkins, all interlinking again for this one, you just had the feeling it was going to be a really high-scoring game. You felt that Villa now could really kick on, get that third, maybe even go and get a fourth and control the match because Villa just seemed to then be three. They just seemed to be like, yes, we're back in control of the game. With Bournemouth having taken you know, the lead so early, it makes Villa uncomfortable, does put a bit of sense of urgency into them, which they delivered in full to gain control back of the match here. And then we see, obviously, Bournemouth having to commit a little bit further and the mistakes in the space opens up again for the last goal. And Leon Bailey with a 97 out of 100 performance here really was one of the best performances I've seen from him alongside playing with Moussa Diaby for a long time this season, if ever. It's, you know, my recollection does let me down once in a while. But I don't remember many games where both of them have really looked tip top of their game. Sometimes maybe Bailey's looked like very industrious and he's actually pulled in a good shift, but Diaby scored the goal or made the assist. And sometimes it's been vice versa. But this game, it really did feel like both of them were electric. Ollie Watkins doesn't get a goal here, but 78 out of 100, I think, does uh, accurately reflect the Ollie Watkins performance we've seen in this game here with his two assists. And just the overall threat he's got in that forward space. And Morgan Rogers producing it again with a 70 out of 100. But, you know, overall, like the numbers, I think, accurately reflect the performance we've seen from Aston Villa in attack for, you know, the middle you know, three quarters of the match, as it were. But again, I think Yuri Tielemans might go as the unsung hero of this match. Although McGinn was the general in this match, the base controller in midfield, Tielemans was a little bit more of the energy. And, you know, you need that player in the middle of the pitch to break the line, to carry the ball past somebody and put the other team on the back foot. McGinn didn't have that many opportunities to do it today. And I don't think it was really on the menu for him to be trying that. But Telemans, who played 90 minutes essentially against Brentford, 82 against Lille, 90 against Arsenal, 120 against Lille, and then 90 against Bournemouth. It really cannot be stated, the energy, the effort, and really how important Telemans was overall to Aston Villa getting the result here today. Aston Villa have always been a kind of sum of their parts effort this season, and with them now getting real control and a real groove on that fourth position, and now sizing up Olympiacos, in the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League. It is theirs all to play for now. Those two games in hand that Tottenham have should give Aston Villa a little bit of, you know, a, a wee reason to keep honest, as it were, and make sure in every single match they are putting everything into it just to make sure they absolutely get it over the line because Tottenham don't have to fly to Athens to play uh, a semi-final. Now, the marathon is complete. Aston Villa have got six days to put their feet up, chill, recover, recoup, rest, regroup. All the R words I can think of. And then it's Chelsea at Villa Park before welcoming Olympiacos for leg one. But then it's away to Brighton, away to Athens, at home in Liverpool. And then last game of the season, away at Crystal Palace, who just absolutely exploded all over West Ham this weekend. It's hard to see Villa winning every game here in this run and points will be dropped, I believe. It does give Tottenham the opportunity to maybe squeeze into fourth year. So I don't think it's all done and dusted yet. Let me know in the comment section of the video how many points do you think Aston Villa will pick up over the remaining games in the Premier League and ultimately will they lock in that fourth position. I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Hit the like button if you did enjoy it, you laughed, you learned, you liked something or whatever. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one.